if you take into consideration the degree of faithfulness that these animals have to place across generations, and if you remove you know, a group of animals that had the memory of that place and that route, you potentially create vacant space. The uh, morning of day three of our hunt, no bucks located, and uh, spirits remain high. Being here-ish at daylight could be an option, or even being, because all these deer were like there. So we're here in uh, southeast Idaho, and we've got uh, Kevin Monteith here who, with us, who's a uh, biologist, and he's gonna educate us quite a bit on mule deer and uh, migration and some of the challenges that they face on this landscape. I'm a wildlife scientist, so I'm a professor at the University of Wyoming. I've been doing research on deer for uh, over a decade now. We dragged Kevin out here because this deer herd is predicated on a migration from north to south, from these mountains down into the desert to the south of us. And so we thought it appropriate to bring in somebody that knows a bit about migrations. So we're hunting totally fresh country. Nobody has been here before, but it's pretty encouraging. It's super broken. Patches of conifer, patches of aspen, big ceanothus patches, and then mixed kind of sage and grasses. So we have seen dozens of elk, probably half a dozen moose or more, but not much in the way of deer not a buck so we're gonna pull it out here get back to the trucks look at the maps and hit a new spot and it's gonna be good and we're gonna kill bucks there wait Ford did you say we're looking for deer <laughs> oh, <sh> there's a <clears throat> hypothesis that we've been working on testing here it has to do with this cross-generational work it's this idea of a rose petal or the rose petal hypothesis. Occupancy of animals or the way in which they use a landscape is based on, or at least in part, based on this maternal inheritance of space. So you have a matriarchal female, produces young, those young inherit that locale, and then they establish their summer range there. And so if you imagine that happen, happening with one female over multiple years, and then you consider all the generation of potential females to come thereafter, if that idea holds, then it, I mean, it fits with this whole realm of faithfulness, of inheritance of space, of these matriarchal clusters, where if something happens, whether intended or otherwise, and you wipe out an entire rows of animals, you know, we may have unintentionally created vacant space in what could be great deer habitat. Deer country without deer. Deer country without deer, exactly. Yesterday was pretty low on deer. We're gonna move, I think, a little further south and hike into a bit of country that's further down the further down the road and see what we can turn up there. Why are we here, Randall? <laughs> that feels like a deeper question. Yeah. Than, <laughs> why are we here? What's even the point? <laughs> why are we here in the existential sense? Or for TRCP, your corridor conservation and, and the conservation of seasonal habitats is a is a big priority of ours. These animals follow very clearly defined paths across the landscape, and they can really get funneled into narrow pinch points and they won't deviate from that. So really this site was sort of the impetus for this hunt. And right here is kind of the heart of the problem. In a hundred yards of highway, we counted, including this one, 24 deer carcasses. What we have here is obviously a serious barrier to the migration of these deer and uh, the deer population's obviously hurting for it. As we gain new understanding of what these animals need to 
survive and get to the habitats that they require. Make sure that we're accounting for that in the, in the land use management plans. A lot of these solutions, like highway crossings in particular, they have a proven track record of being very effective. So fortunately, the state actually recently purchased an easement in this area to, to protect some of this uh, ground from development. And even better, the state right now is working on plans to put several crossing structures in this area. It's not just the landscapes like this one where you're hiking around with a rifle. The opportunity here in these types of places is totally contingent on decisions made about how land is managed or used 60 miles away. From the sportsman's perspective, healthy herds equal opportunity. He's a buck. The only buck that we've seen. Yeah. And we, we got it done. Get after it. Mm. He is a two and a half year old. Teeth? Yep. See how it has one, two cusps. Yep. So on a yearling, it's gonna have three. So many problems in conservation aren't black and white. They're kind of gray, they're muddled, they're convoluted, they're hard to see. But right here we've got you know pretty clear evidence of an issue. What we're trying to do is uh, make sure that policies keep up with the science. With everything we do, it's fun, it's interesting. We learn a lot of really cool stuff, but if it's not connected to people, it's not connected to decision making, then kind of what's the point in the end? Protecting migration corridors is vital to maintaining healthy big game populations in the West. And so I think it's on us to use our voice to raise these issues to folks and, and make sure they know about it, make sure they care. Because uh, in many circumstances, their hunt might literally depend on these things. Say that one more time. Should I not swing my hips when I do no, that? No, that was perfect. <laughs> <laughs>